How's it going everyone? Welcome back to another Roblox tutorial. But before we get started, don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment. It helps a ton. Don't forget to hit the notification bell if you haven't already. Uh, join the official Spooks HD Discord. It's the best place to get your issues resolved and to get in contact with me and the rest of the community easily. Or just comment down below if you have any issues with any of my tutorials. And don't forget to follow me on my social media, at Spooks, uh, at Spooks Let's Get on Twitter. And uh, let's go ahead and get right into it. So in the last episode, by the way, uh, let's go ahead and cover something really quickly. If you don't know what this series is, it's it's uh, this series is the How to Make a Jailbreak series, a part of the How to Make a Game series that I have. And if you haven't watched the first or second episode, I'd recommend go watching the first episode first, then the second, and then this episode. Uh, because you're going to be kind of lost with the, what we already have. So anyways, uh, let's actually get into it. So uh, last episode we made it so you would, uh, once you escape this little boundary here, uh, you would become a criminal. And that's perfect and all, but uh, we're still working on the criminal slash prisoner part of jailbreak. So what's the next logical step? Well, we're not going to work on guns or uh, vehicles just yet, but an important part is the notifications. Um, now you might say, well, spooks, uh, the notifications are kind of just ignored. Well, if we're trying to replicate jailbreak here, we kind of need to replicate everything that has uh, that belongs to the prisoners. And notifications saying it's breakfast time is one of them. Now, one thing that uh, jailbreak does not do is stop the notifications from showing on like a police officer's uh, screen. Correct me if I'm wrong. I don't know if they changed that yet. Uh, it's been a while since i played jailbreak but anyways um so that's what we're going to be doing today so uh we're actually going to be opening up starter gui and we're going to go to a object that we haven't used in a while uh ui or ui uh so basically we're going to go ahead and insert a frame to create that notification object and we're just going to set the anchor point to 0.5 and then the position to 0.5 as well so uh make sure to keep note 0.5 for the anchor point 0.5 for the position and then we're just going to set this to 0.01 to have it a little bit down there. We're going to set the border size pixel to 3. We're going to change this to 221 uh, on all sides. And then we're just going to go ahead and set this to 0 0.350, 0 0.110. And keep note of the 0.11. Uh, that's actually very important and we're going to be using it later. So let's go ahead and name this under uh, lowercase notification. Now the next logical step is to make the title. So that's what we're going to be doing here. So we're going to set background transparency to 1, uh, the size to 1, and then 0.3. So it looks like that. Uh, we're going to be setting source sans to source sans bold uh, to emphasize the title. Um, and then we're just going to go ahead and like let's say just uh, breakfast for the time being, right? And then we're just going to go ahead and set the title, maybe a little bit down. There we go, 0.04. That looks quite well. That actually looks pretty good. So we're just going to go ahead and set title to that, and then we're going to keep it. And then we're going to go ahead and duplicate that, and we're going to name that uh, disk. And we're going to go ahead and uh, we're going to go ahead and set this to uh, about 0.4. Or that actually looks pretty good. And then we're just going to set this to 0.5. Uh, now you see it's text scale. We'll fix the how big that is later. So we're going to set semi bold. So uh, let's just do good morning. Uh, go some breakfast. So there we go. And it's quite big. It's quite big. So we have everything almost ready there. So we're going to set that to top. And okay, you might say, well, spooks, this is pretty great and all, but how do I make the text smaller? Uh, the way you would do that is inserting an object in a UI text uh, size constraint, and then you're just going to make this set to 20, and that is actually pretty good for most platforms. Unless you got an ultra wide, that's like uh, like a 24 inch ultra, uh, not 24 inch, but like a 32 inch ultra wide or something like that. Uh, it might be a bit small, but it's good for most users. Uh, so, anyways, now we're done with that. We can go ahead and put that in our assets. And that's pretty good. So now what we're going to go ahead and do is make it so this uh, so this can appear. So we're going to go ahead and go above team choose function. We're just going to go ahead and uh, notification function. 
And then after that, we're just going to go ahead and create a new variable called existing notification. And we're going to be using this uh, sometime in the, a little bit later. And this is going to be storing our notification object. So now we're just going to go ahead and do function open notification. If I spelt that right, yeah, I did. So uh, then we're just going to go title, description, and then callback. Now, basically what we're doing here is we're creating the function, right? And we're going to be handing this function a title, a description, and we could hand it a callback, and we will, and you'll see why in a bit. We need to check if an existing notification exists. Uh, if one does exist, then we have to go ahead and quit that notification, and we'll be doing that in a bit. Uh, we're just going to put this here for now. Repeat wait until not existing notification which basically means repeat uh repeat or actually no i i don't know why i kept saying that basically we're just saying stop the uh stop the function before we uh get the uh, oh shoot i can't even speak okay um we're gonna stop the function until uh we no longer have an existing notification uh, now we're going to go ahead and create our notification object. So we're going to go ahead and ask, uh, access our assets. And then we're just going to go ahead and do notification and then clone. And then we're going to go ahead and do notification.position is equal to udim2.new.50 negative 0 0.110. And like I said before, the y size is very important because basically since we're saying this to negative, it's going to be above the screen and uh you're not going to be able to see it and that's what we want because we're going to do an animation for it so now what we want to do is set the text to the title and then the same for the description and now that we've done that we can go ahead and set the parent of the notification to ui and then we can just go ahead and do tween uh one sign out and then we're going to go ahead and do uh, udem2.new 0 0.50 and then we're going to go ahead and do 0 0.010 and then notification and then play. Which just basically says, okay, it's going to take one second to get back to its original location. And then we're going to go ahead and call delay. Now you guys might be, well, Spooks, what does delay do? And delay practically, if we give it, so first we put in the amount of seconds we want it to wait. And then we go ahead and give it a function. Yo. So basically what this does, it's going to wait three seconds to call this code. Uh, that's all it does. And But the good thing about it is uh if we had so if we go ahead and put our last line here and we set this to notification uh this if we put wait three like this it would stop uh it would stop this from executing for three seconds but basically what this does is says okay cool you know what you can you can run i'm gonna run in three seconds from now and that's what it's gonna do so now uh we're gonna need to create a new function called quit notification and this is what we needed so we're going to go ahead and give it a callback because that's all we need for it and this is actually probably the most important part uh and you might be well spooks wouldn't this be the most important part and it kind of it kind of is but a quit notification is really what allows us to uh send more notifications in so we're going to go ahead and do sign out and then we're just going to go ahead and copy this. So position is equal to that and then notification. Uh, what did I do? All right. Uh, existing notification and then we're going to call and then no, not call play. We're going to do it down here because basically we have to save room for this. So if you did uh, if you did a uh, colon play or uh, yeah, if you just called play on T, it would not return a tween object, which is what we want because the tween object has a dot completed event. And what we're gonna do, if you know what, uh, if you watched the previous videos, you know what we do with events, we connect to them. So basically uh, every time the at tween or animation gets canceled or completed, it'll call this function with a playback state. And if ps is equal equal to enum.playbackState.completed, and actually that should be not equal to, which is the tilde, uh, basically you have your playback state and it's equal to enum.playbackState.completed. 
or uh, any of the any of these other ones. And what we really care about is if it actually uh, is completed. And if it is, then what we're going to go ahead and do is existing notification destroy. Existing notification is equal to nil. And then if callback, then uh, we're going to call it. And basically, and I'll explain what what callback what we're using callback for uh, in a bit. But basically, what we're doing is we're just going to destroy the UI once it, we're done with it, and then we're just going to set the variable to nil. So, uh, so this works. So now we're just going to call a hell, go, <laughs> now we're going to go ahead and call quit notification, and then we're just going to call quit notification with callback. And there we go. That is that, and it's done. So now we're going to go down here, and we're going to go ahead and do environment uh, tracking. And this one is actually kind of easy. So time of day notifications is equal to an array, or no, a dictionary. Because what we're going to be doing is we're going to be setting a uh, the key to a certain time. So right now we have it set to uh, noon, and we're going to go ahead and do title is equal to, uh, I don't know, uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, break time, I guess. And then we're just going to go ahead and set description, and we're going to go ahead and uh, do, I guess, uh, go have fun and work out. So that's going to be the description and title. This is a really dumb description. Uh, but basically, uh, that's how that's going to work. And then what we're going to go ahead and do is local inf tracker and then current time notification. And then we're just going to go ahead and do inf tracker is equal to heartbeat connect function. And then what we're going to go ahead and do is if not current time notification, which basically means, okay, if we don't have a current uh, notification, then for a, B and next uh, time of day notifications do. And if you don't know uh, what next does, it's basically if you've ever called pairs and then anything inside this, it's basically just calling next and whatever you put afterwards. And it's actually slightly faster, so it's your choice whether or not you use pairs or not. So basically, now we're, uh, what we're going to go ahead and do is lighting dot time of day is equal to a. Then what we're going to go ahead and do is current time notification is equal to b, and then open notification b dot title b dot description function, and then current time notification is equal to nil. So basically, if we look at lighting right now, time of day is in the exact format we put it in. So basically what we're saying is, okay, if it is equal to exactly noon, then what we're going to go ahead and do, so if it's equal to this, so if that is equal to that, then what we're gonna go ahead and do is set the current time notification, and then, uh, and then that stops any further code execution of this. So uh, the next time this happens, uh, this won't uh, this won't you know appear, and then current time notification for, uh, and then we're just gonna go ahead and once the callback is done, once our notification is finished, uh, we set the current time notification to nil so we can get new ones. Uh, we have an error here which has to do with line sixty four. Uh, right, because we have to go ahead and set position is equal to. There we go. All right. Um, so now if we go ahead and press play. Uh, all right. So we can go ahead and become like a police or whatever. And then lighting and then set that to 12. Basically, break time, go have fun and work out. Three seconds later, it goes away. Now you might be uh, saying, well, spooks, what about... Uh, why does it keep appearing? And that's because the lighting never changes. The time of day never changes. It keeps staying at 12. So we need to change that a bit further. So we're gonna go ahead and do uh, service shorthands, right? And what we're going to copy is we're gonna go up here and we're literally just gonna copy these three. This is all we need. And then we're gonna go ahead and do environment uh, controller. And we're gonna go ahead and call spawn function and then end. So let's go ahead and explain spawn. And actually, some of you more advanced programmers might go ahead and say, well, spooks, why aren't you using curtains or coroutines? And that's because you don't need them. And that's for another future video. But basically, what spawn does is it basically says this. Okay, uh, we're going to save this code in here for later execution time. But 
if we had like a while loop here right uh basically this would be if we had two while loops if we had one out here and one in here they would be both running at the same time that's basically a simple version of spawn explained so what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to call whatever code is in here every second so we're going to go ahead and do tween one sign out and then clock time which basically is not time of day but instead it's a number representing time of day uh in a in a real number so a, a integer in a decimal form practically and we're going to go ahead and set it to lighting dot clock time plus one divided by 60. so let's say every second we want one minute of in-game time to go by so one divided by 60. If you wanted five, uh, five minutes, you would do five divided by 60. If you wanted, um, if you wanted uh, like a second to go by, be 1,003, uh, one, one divided by 3,600, 60 times 60. But really what we just want is the one divided by 60. Uh, so then after that, it increases every minute. And then we're gonna go ahead and make it so lighting is the one that changes and we could press play. So now if we go ahead and do play solo, you will see that uh, the lighting does indeed change right here, which is fantastic. And you can kind of see the sun moving. Uh, what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to make it so uh, this right here is set to 1150 and then we just do 00. zero. So, uh, okay, that did not work. So we're just going to go ahead and do 11.8. Okay, if I could change it, I don't think I'm changing it. Uh, yeah, so basically we're not going to be able to change it during that. But let's go ahead and 11.8 or 9. I, I said 9. There we go. So we have 6 seconds. So if we go ahead and press play. And go ahead and click on lighting. And become a uh, police. You'll see that once it reaches 12... Uh, there we go. It says break time, go have fun and work out, and then it goes away three seconds later, as you can see in time of day. So uh, that's the entire video, guys. Uh, it's actually pretty simple. Uh, it's a pretty simple system. Now we have this. Uh, we'll be adding a bit more in the next episode so we can have this working out. And uh, now we have the system set up, we can use this for later uh, tutorials uh, or later episodes. So anyways, I want to say thank you guys so much for watching and thank you guys for 5,000 subscribers. Uh, a future video for that coming out soon. I can't believe we made it this far. Thank you guys so much for all the support recently. And don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment, and hit that notification bell if you haven't already. And uh, join the official Spooks HD Discord. It means a ton to me if you guys join and you communicate to others and be a community. And uh, don't forget to leave a like if this helped you at all. Leave a comment down below if you have any issues whatsoever. And uh, I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.